Hi, I'm Rachel from 7 and All, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about science curriculum. I'm going to be showing you a bunch of different elementary science curriculums, talking about the pros and cons of each one and sharing some of the different features to help you be able to pick out the right science that's going to be a good fit for your family. that you will stick around and subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot and lets me know that you enjoy this type of content. And if you have a science curriculum that you are just loving in your family, definitely leave it down in the comments below so that I can learn more about it. All of the curriculums I will be showing you today are not sp secular curriculums um, specifically. They kind of vary quite a bit in their faith-based content um, to a large extent, but I'll talk about that more when I get into the video. First, let's talk about Apologia's Young Explorer series. I feel like Apologia is kind of like the granddaddy of homeschool science curriculum, um, but that doesn't mean it's old or old-fashioned or boring, so don't get the wrong idea about it. Um, Apologia does offer middle school and high school levels as well. So you, one benefit of using Apologia from early on, if you like it, you can just keep continuing with it the whole way through. They even have advanced level courses um, equivalent to um, college, early college level. Now, some things to know um, that the different pieces to the program are the textbook, which this is the textbook right here the notebooking journal, which that's this contraption right here. There is a junior notebooking journal, which is similar, but it is adapted for the basically K through second grade student and doesn't require as much writing. And is just more a way to adapt the material down for a younger student. There's also audiobooks, which some people love the audiobooks quite a bit, and a field trip journal. I've never actually seen that one in use, but it exists. Um, so inside the textbook, it's gonna look like this, which don't be afraid, it does look like a textbook. Um, I'm not scared of textbooks. I know some homeschoolers try to run away when they see a textbook coming. I, I kind of have a fondness for textbooks myself. I mean, this is a really cute one here. It's talking about volume. This bread has more volume than this bread. This hair has a lot more volume than this hair. So this is our chemistry and physics one, which chemistry and physics sounds like high school, doesn't it? But it actually starts with some concepts early on um, that you could do at the more elementary level. There's projects involved. There were different try this sections earlier on that you could see for very simple experiments. Some experiments are very simple while others are going to be more involved. You can look through that. And then at the end, at the end of the lesson here, they have an experiment and moving on to lesson three. Now, these are not daily lessons. There is a sample schedule. You can, of course, always schedule things how it works best for your family. But I love it when a curriculum includes some sort of schedule for you because I think it just really helps you to be able to wrap your mind around all the different pieces. Now the way that they did a sample schedule was they have you take two weeks to go through a lesson while doing it two days a week. Which two days of doing science well a week is definitely sufficient for the elementary level. So you're getting through one lesson every two weeks. And this is um, integrating both the textbook and then assignments from the notebooking journal, which some of it is just plain old straight up notebooking like this, taking notes, drawing illustrations based on what you're reading in the chapter. There are some projects that are a little bit more colorful and involved. Um, and the back is where most of the pieces for those are. But in that schedule, it tells you when to do these. You don't have to do any guessing. Um, so it's pretty easy. And there's a lot of hands-on activities in the book. 
You will see um, some things like crossword puzzles in here for reviews. For the vocabulary crossword, there's copy work of Bible verses in here because this is, of course, uh, exploring creation with chemistry and physics, um, looking at everything from a biblical perspective. Um, some of those projects in the notebooking journal are really, really cool. So I think if you don't have the notebooking journal, you would be missing a lot. You could do it without it. You could um, definitely add on your own written work. Uh, but I, I like written work. I think it's very beneficial and I think the notebooks are well done. Now, can you do everything? I've heard it basically said that <laughs> the notebooks are full of more stuff than you could pretty much reasonably do in any school year. And I think that's pretty much true. Now, the ex whole Exploring Creation series is said to be very adaptable, that you can do it family style. Um, that's an interesting side cut of a face. You can do it family style, <laughs> uh, but um, you can adapt it using the journals or just using different expectations for different grades of kids. And it's roughly from kindergarten through sixth grade. Now, clearly, if your oldest was in <laughs> kindergarten or first or even second grade, there is no way I would be picking up anatomy or the exploring creation with chemistry and physics. But there's a very different dynamic when your oldest kid is in a certain grade, if your oldest kid is third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, um, versus if your oldest kid is younger. They, when you have older kids, you can kind of group the younger kids in with them, um, but it doesn't work so well if all your kids are little. Uh, there is a little bit of variation between the subjects. From what I've heard, I believe that the zoology themed ones about birds, or about swimming um, creatures are easier than these particular topics. Um, we, we, we're, our family's not super big on animal science, so these were the topics my mom had picked to buy. Um, if you want a more in-depth look at apology of science, I recommend take, uh, going to visit my friend Katie's video, um, Katie from Life in the Mundane. I will be linking to her channel, um, her video on Apologia down below because she is very knowledgeable about this curriculum and has used it for quite a long time with her kids and has all sorts of tips and tricks on how to get the most out of this for you if this is your choice. And now sunlight. Sunlight, of course, brings its literature-based approach to everything, including science for the elementary levels. Um, so sunlight sciences are gonna give you a whole big stack of good books, nonfiction books, and they're also going to give you a box of supplies for science experiments, and then they're going to give you a schedule as well. Their schedules might be looking a little bit different. This is from an um, most of our, you know, we've been homeschooling a long time, so most of our homeschool materials are a little bit on the older side, but they are, they still work, you know, no need to throw something away after using it just once. So here's an example of a sunlight schedule. It looks very much like the core sunlight schedules look. You have a couple books that you might be reading. You'll have books, you'll have activity sheets in the instructor's guide or schedule. There are activity sheets for you to do based on the books. There will be experiments scheduled. So that's just one example of one week. That's an example of a different week. Now these tops books I feel like are very iconic to any long-term sunlight person. Um, some people love them, some people not so much. But they're pretty neat here. They'll walk you through different types of experiments within different subjects. So these books are from an electricity and magnetism focused um, topic or year of sunlight. They have quite a wide variety of topics through the different elementary years. They have um, taxonomy and anatomy, medical type of science, they've got robotics. Usually in each year of sunlight, there's like just a handful of a couple topics. So it's not necessarily one thing for the whole year. I don't believe that this book, Diary of an Early American Boy, is actually in the newer edition of Sunlight Science. But it is a pretty neat book, I think. I mean, maybe it's a little boring for some people's taste, but I thought it was cool. And of course they use a lot of us born books 
or various um, resources that you, that will be pretty familiar to you. So basically, you get a stack of books, you get a schedule, you get a box of supplies for your experiments, and you just follow the schedule, check things off the list, no prep pretty much, it's pretty easy to implement, and you get to read a lot of great stuff while learning a lot of great stuff. Now, this is Abeka Elementary Science. Um, Abeka is a Christian school curriculum, not specifically a homeschool curriculum, although many homeschoolers use it. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, I've got the second grade and the fifth grade here to show you just some of the similarities um, and differences uh, today. Now they have basically everything is for every year, you have part of the year is focused on health. So fifth grade is enjoying good health, health, safety, and manners for second grade. For second, and then part of the year, I think it's usually a bigger book for the science part of the year. And that's more of a general earth science, which it could go into many different topics. It can go into weather, it can go into physics, into plant and animal taxonomy. And it kind of go, it, it goes around into a variety of topics, but it's very generalized to some extent. And then more, maybe an individual chapter focuses in on a specific topic. So you can see that the fifth grade um, textbook is quite a bit more intense. Now, if your child is a fluent reader, once they reach the fluent reading point, so maybe not in second grade, depending on your kid, maybe only by about third grade, this is definitely a science that you could hand to your kid and they can just do it. They'll read through pages until they get to a comprehension check or a little place to answer questions. And then they can answer the questions in a notebook or in the book however you prefer. There are also quizzes and tests to go with the different levels. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what grade the quizzes and tests start, but most of the grades come with quizzes and tests. So that's great if you are having your children do the science independently. That's when you probably more want to use quizzes and tests because you're not going to be necessary, like, it, for independent work, you want to have some way to check it, and quizzes and tests are a helpful way to do that. The answer keys do have answers to the comp che comprehension checks as well, which you may want to get, um, or you may want to just, you know, test your own brain every day. But this is definitely an option for something that's totally easy to implement, that's something that's more independent than most other elementary science options and is more like what you would expect in normal school. You're not going to have so much necessarily literature or various other books that you have to bring into this at all. You can just open and go, and that is what some families need. Now I'm going to show you uh, Gentle and Classical Nature, Volume 1. So far, Volume 1 is the only volume that exists at the time that I'm making this video. I don't think that there's been a release point for Gentle and Classical Nature Volume 2, but I believe it's in progress of being made. Uh, so this is from the same creator of Gentle and Classical Preschool and Primer, and this is her early science program. It's divided into units. There's 18 units, so you can spend two weeks on a unit to make it fit well with one school year. And I'll show you the elements of a unit. There is I only started printing this at where the actual unit started. The beginning of the teacher's manual has a lot. It is a, a lot of information, a lot of explanation between behind the heart of the whole entire curriculum. So you can download just the teacher's guide for free on her website, and I definitely recommend doing that if you're interested in this at all. It is a really neat program. You get a snapshot page for each unit there's different levels of memory statements. So depending on what age kids you're using this with, you can choose which memory statement you want to have them work on. And then when you buy the whole uh, Gentle and Classical Nature program, she has cards for each of these memory statements that you can use as flashcards or put on the wall to help, um, help your children with the memorization. So this is more maybe for the preschool, kindergarten, first grade level and it can get higher from there. So this is designed to be family style 
or adaptable rather than set to a specific grade level. Now basically, so our unit right now is on amphibians. We have our memory statements related to frogs at the most basic level or amphibians at a higher level. Then during the course of your two week unit, you're going to be reading the assigned readings from your core books or your read alouds. This is a literature based type of study. So I'll just show you some of the books that you would be reading. You would want to buy your core books. So this is one of those up in the garden and down in the dirt. We have a frog and toad, frog and toad. They have the frog and toad storybook treasury. I bought the Spanish version because my goal with this is to do as much of it in Spanish as I can. Uh, so, Frog and Toad exists in Spanish, I'm gonna buy it in Spanish. Isn't that awesome? Um, and then these are a couple of the other core books from different parts of this year. And this is her main nonfiction core, which is definitely going to look very familiar uh, because it's one of the most trendy books in a uh, homeschool world right now, you know, very Instagrammable. But I bet you didn't know it came in Spanish too. That was a surprise to me. So you read your books, you have your memory statement you're working on throughout the two weeks. There is a student notebook and there's two levels of a student notebook. So you can adapt, it assigns you to do a certain page or a project within the student notebook. You can work on those pages throughout the weeks, which maybe it just has information to read or simple, simple kind of worksheets. And you do that either the easier level or the harder level depending on the age of your child. And you are supposed to go on a walk, like a specific nature walk, visiting a specific place that you will return to again and again throughout your term and work on building your child's ability to describe what they see. They also give recommendations for additional books. So the idea behind this is, oh, our theme is amphibians. So let's read some extra, just little storybooks, related storybooks or nonfiction books related to amphibians in some way um, during the two week unit. Um, so they have some that are at a lower level, some that are at a higher level. She gives ideas for you know extra activities. If you're feeling extra, you can do more, but you don't have to. And then we move on in this way. We go freshwater fish, aquatic insects, freshwater birds. The themes are very kind of North American temperate regions, which, you know, makes sense. That's where most um, homeschoolers are kind of based. So you would be starting from that point for learning your nature history. Um, that is something to be aware, aware of if, like me, you are in the tropics because we have um, Raphalesia and uh, Bungaraya, what's it called, hibiscus, and Bougainvillea. We have very different flowers here than they have. So the flowers that are maybe mentioned and talked about, the wildflowers talked about in the student notebook won't necessarily be things we have locally, but I don't think you necessarily have to learn about what you have locally, right? Um, you can learn about it all. So I, I think this is a um, great option, especially for very young students. When you're just getting into science, when you're not ready yet for something like Apologia, and there's no reason to be doing something that intense, but you're just working on building some memorization, reading some good books, learning about the world around you in a very gentle way. So this is, you can tell by the Spanish books I've bought, this is what I'm planning to do once I feel like my boys are ready to dive into Spanish a little, not Spanish, <laughs> science a little bit more, this is what I'm planning to do. You will notice she does have a tiny bit of foreign language in, in these. There's always three vocab words. You can choose to do vocab in either Spanish or French. Now for us, three vocab words in Spanish is like we would, uh, we would be reading books in Spanish. Um, so it's not good for bilinguals for bilingual families in this sense, but it is really cool as, you know, a slight introduction to very young kids who are maybe learning their first words in a foreign language. For me, I'm thinking that I might um, just look up these three words in 
Chinese and start introducing our, you know, foreign language beyond just the two languages we speak at home. So, you know, uh, learning more words and more languages, that's a good thing to me. All right. And now let's take a look at the good and the beautiful. The good and the beautiful has a wide variety of themed science unit studies. Now, n these are not year long programs at all. They're all relatively short, um, but they're on very specific topics within science. And they are meant to be done family style, ranging from K through eight. Now, I think that this is a very hard age range to span. So sometimes if you really, they do have extra extensions for seventh through eighth grade. Um, but for me, I don't know if to me, for our family, usually around eighth grade, we'd be starting more like real high school science with labs to some extent. So I think it would be hard uh, to totally um, level it up enough to really middle school level. Uh, but, you know, if you're up for the challenge, you can probably do it. You're just going to have to put some work into it. I would say that this probably requires about the most prep of any of the science curriculums I have shown you today. Um, just in cutting out things and getting little activities ready, supplies ready. It's very hands-on. There's a lot of cut out paper pieces and so on for each uh, activity and unit. Not necessarily every lesson, um, but there's quite a bit. There are read aloud books options for you. So that's cool for any you don't have to go totally searching if you want to add literature onto your study because they already have recommendations for you. They have vocabulary cards and they have scripted lessons that are going to walk you right through what to say. So this is not a textbook that you could hand to your child and they can do by themselves or that your child could read to your other children necessarily. It really is meant to be teacher led. So they will have, and the lessons are always going to include hands-on elements. So a chance to, okay, now we're gonna do an activity with these vocabulary words, or now we're going to do an experiment that will require some supplies. Now, I think many of their science experiments, they actually have videos for on the Good and the Beautiful channel so that you could find those videos rather than just doing the experiment which is a very solid option. I have to admit, I am not a big do the science experiment kind of person. There are times, there are times for ex science experiments, but not always. <laughs> um, so, but they do have videos for a, that kind of option. So like, here's an example with lesson two. It, gives, it tells you exactly what to prepare. It tells you exactly what supplies you would need, which depending on you, you might think this is a piece of cake or you might think mm, that's a little bit complicated for me. So it's important to know yourself when you're choosing your science curriculum. Don't choose a science curriculum that is going to be a good fit for a different homeschool parent. <laughs> you are the only homeschool parent that's running your homeschool right now. Choose one that's going to be a good fit for you and what you can do. But I'm giving you a look inside this one. This is of course, the marine biology, but they have weather, they have um, space, they've got all sorts of different, geology looks pretty cool. They've got a lot of different specific topics, but remember that in order to really do a year's worth of science, you are going to have to get multiple units to go through a year. I'm not, I don't think that there's an exact rule in any sense of how many are going to be one full you know, good solid year of science, but it's definitely gonna be more than one. So do keep that in mind um, as far as prep and so on. That's one of the reasons I do think it requires more prep because if you prep it all, but at least you're done for a year, well, that's okay. But if you prep it all and oh man, <laughs> I have to do that all again in a couple months. Well, that's a little bit of a different story. Some people are a lot better at prepping than others. That's a look inside that one for you. I hope that you're finding this video helpful, that looking at these five different options for elementary science was helpful to you as you think about what you want your homeschool science to look like. I will see you later, bye.